Ariana DeBose here. I'm on my way to the theater for quick rehearsal. And then I get to make my Broadway debut tonight. <laughs> Let's go. I'm in Bring It On a Musical. A crazy little chair show y'all been seeing all over the place. There's Billboard in Times Square. My face is actually on it, which is kind of cool. I had done So You Think You Can Dance. And uh, that, was, that was a really incredible experience. I learned a lot. But I also realized I didn't want to go to school for dance. And thankfully, Andy Blankenbuehler saw me in his audition and decided I was good enough for a show. I mean, I had to go and audition four different times. But I'm just really thankful I got the call back. And um, I was with the production down when we made its world premiere in Atlanta at the Alliance Theater, which was incredible because we were all embarking on something so new and so different. Nobody knew what was going to happen. I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. I started out dancing. I've been dancing since I was three. Then I got into theater in high school, pretty much like every other thespian in the world. <laughs> Our school, county, county, would partner with Broadway Series South and bring in Broadway stars to come and direct shows with kids. It was an incredible educational opportunity. And I got to work with the likes of Terrence Mann and Charlotte Dubois and uh, Eric Scotto from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which was a fabulous show, by the way. Um, like way before I ever decided that this is what I wanted to do. So that was really amazing. It's time for some coffee, so let's go. Isn't this like the cutest place you've ever yeah, seen in your good. life? Can I get a large iced coffee? I guess it's too early for cheesecake. Can I have bagel, a bagel, please? Just a plain bagel. Thank you. Oh, there's nothing like a good iced coffee. Nothing. On a normal schedule, yes, I come every day. However, because we're rehearsing all the time, and the only thing I have time to do is sleep, I pretty much sleep right up until I really need to leave my house. And at least we get the caffeine from the coffee. Iced coffee makes the world go round. It's really good. Thank you. Have a good day. Time to eat. Let's go. If I wanted, I could eat anything. But honestly, I, my body functions best when I, you know, eat healthy. Friday Night Direction is this epic number in our show. And it's just basically like a big old rave party. But it takes a lot of energy. So thank God for this coffee. In fact, that's probably what we're gonna go rehearse because I swear we rehearse that number all the time. Breakfast of champions, man. It is. Absolutely. <laughs> favorite restaurant bar. It's like the perfect after show spot. We Harlemites of the cast will meet up here sometimes. I mean there are maybe like five of us who can actually like get together because we're two to three blocks radius. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> that happens a lot. I don't have any patience. I never wait for the signs to actually change. But what New Yorker does, let's be real. It's not just me. <laughs> Local laundromat, bomb. It's so great. It is hot as all get out. Really generally just hot all the time in, in down south, but probably, honestly, June and July is heinous. And southerners are notorious for that. They'll have these beautiful, beautiful cars, but they put leather seats in it, which sucks during the summer. You sweat and you get stuck. <laughs> but you are riding in style. And I'm gonna ride in style on the 2-3 on the way to work, which is the fastest train in New York, I, I'm telling you. When I'm on the train, I'm going to choreo all the time because Andy makes changes daily. Just try to prepare myself for what I'm walking into. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. It's bad because when I <laughs> am trying to like, go through numbers, I move around like a crazy person and I'm definitely like, or I'll warm up. I'm notorious for trying to warm up, but all these people look at me like I'm a little bit nuts. But today I'm very, I'm feeling very focused. So, I don't really have to rehearse the steps because I know that they're there. I know my show now. We're good, we're in good shape. <laughs> this is Times Square. 
I actually really like walking through this part of the subway. I don't really know why, but probably because when I was a when I first came to New York like as a child with my mom, she made sure that we went on the subway. She was very much like, no, you're going to behave like you actually live here, like you're an actual New Yorker. And she sat outside the studio when I took class and helped me with my costumes, but she was not a stage mom. When I finally got into heavy competitions, she pretty much gave me my costume bag and was like, good luck, figure out how to do your makeup. You can do this on your own. Uh, and I didn't really ask her for help unless I absolutely needed it. But you know what, I'm really thankful because when I got here, I didn't need my mom to do anything for me. Like she had instilled this, you know, go-getter type attitude into me. Hi, mom. <laughs> Walking to work as I talk to Playbill.com. Say hi, Playbill.com. Anyways, it sounds so cliche, but you know, there's that line in the chorus line where Deanna's talking about, you know, when she was a kid, she used to stand by the stage door and see all those people walk out dream that she wanted to be one of them and I totally get that because that's what I did when I was a kid. It was kind of a responsibility with that so I know when I walk through that door I have to give 150 million percent. And it's the St. James. Some really incredible shows came through this theater. So many incredible people have walked through the same doors that I get to walk through every day. It's time to bring it, yeah. Thanks guys, it's been a real pleasure. I'm gonna go bring you a really fierce show tonight. Thanks for hanging out.